Is it good for you? So much confusion about protein, right? There's a vegan trend, a vegetarian trend, there's plant-based foods. What's the real story on protein? Is it just numbers or does quality matter? Are there good proteins? Are there bad proteins? What really works? And what do we need to be thinking about? Now, we talked about this with carbohydrates. Check out that video right here. And this one, we're tackling protein confusion, but I still wanna lay a foundation. And that foundation is all about blood sugar. Protein plays a pivotal role in managing blood sugar, keeping insulin levels stable, and helping our hormones. More importantly, protein actually helps us to maintain our muscle mass. When we are not getting enough protein and protein is not being utilized effectively, the muscles don't have the fuel they need to grow and to regenerate. And then you add on being sedentary a lot, maybe having a desk job, not staying active, and hormones slowly starting to shift, declining testosterone, declining estrogen and progesterone, well, that muscle mass starts to go away as well. And as we lose muscle, insulin levels again go up, blood sugar goes up, and we're back to dealing with belly fat, back fat, you know, high cholesterol markers, high blood pressure, you name it, you guys know what I'm talking about. We've got to figure out a way to get around it. So everyone's gotten clued in. Everyone's talking about the importance of protein. In fact, even I talk about 20 to 25 grams of protein every four hours to keep blood sugar stable, to keep your insulin levels where they need to be. But could protein be making you fat? Now, one of the things that has been fascinating in practice at Center Spring MD, we do a test, it's called the GX Slim, and it matches your genetics to the best way for you to eat. Love the information, super helpful. Even gives you a guide of what good and bad proteins might be for you. But here's what I found. There are some of us that can't digest a lot of protein well. So they need to make sure any protein is balanced with fiber, with antioxidants, with lots of fruits and vegetables, so the body can do the work it's meant to do. All right, but let's get down to business. We wanna talk about good proteins versus bad proteins. Here is what you need to know. Here are the rules. And this is what I want you to have almost like a checklist in your brain when you're walking through the grocery store or trying to prep meals or eating out. Bad proteins are bad for a couple of different reasons. They have too much sugar added to them. They have additives. They're processed. They're not manufactured well. They don't provide enough protein per serving or the portion is simply too large. So let's take a look at what I have laid out here. I bet you can already pick out the good protein versus the bad protein. So let's start with yogurt. Healthy, right? Everyone loves yogurt, good bacteria. I myself have talked about it. Hopefully you've seen some of my videos on good gut health. If you haven't, check some of those out right here. But let's take a look at this and see. So we've got and this particular brand of yogurt, this serving, 12 grams of protein, still not really meeting that 20 grams every four hours that we're going for. No fiber whatsoever, so it's gonna run through the body really quickly. But I would say more problematic than that, nine grams of sugar in here. When you add sugar to your protein, you're simply spiking your blood sugar. Not a good option. We do plain Greek yogurt instead. That gives you about 15 to 20 grams. Add in a few nuts, a little bit of honey if you need the sweetness, but not a great option for protein when you're trying to get those protein numbers up. All right, let's do another yogurt while we're sitting here. All right, this time, five grams of protein. This one at least had 12, but now we've got 26 grams of carbohydrates, and the kicker, I don't really even wanna tell you this, 20 grams of sugar. I've gotta be honest, guys, I lived on this in med school and residency. I thought I was being healthy, how? It happens to all of you all the time, it happened to me as well. These guys are not good proteins, they need to go. In fact, I'm gonna take them away. Protein smoothies, right? Middle of the day, you're tired, you need a protein smoothie, you need to pick me up. Dr. Taz said 20 to 25 grams of protein every four hours, you're gonna get it. Let's see if this makes it. 30 grams of protein, yay, ding, 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 we got a winner of sorts. 56 grams of carbohydrates, 48 grams of sugar. No, this does not help balance out all the protein in there. So this actually loses out as well. Protein bars, again, I used to live on these things. So I, I don't want you to think that I miss no at all. These are things that I did as well. I know so many, even my colleagues will live on protein bars, but all protein bars are not 
created equally. And we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. So this particular one, let me find the protein, 10 grams of protein, sugar is seven grams, no fiber. Not a great pick. Maybe not as bad as the smoothie, maybe not as bad as this particular yogurt, but still not a really great pick. And I'm looking at the protein grams, but also the added sugar, how much fiber they have to decide if it's a good protein versus bad protein, especially when it's packaged like this. Protein shakes. I live by my protein shakes. I'm busy, a little stress, rushing out of here in the morning, and I put about two scoops of a protein powder in there. That's about 20 to 25 grams. I'll add oat milk, so I might get, I do the protein oat milk, so I might get another seven grams in, and then maybe whatever flavorings, and nut butter, frozen fruit, etc. So not a bad way to get protein in, but here's what I found. If you have a protein powder with too much sugar, I'll actually gain weight. And if the ratio of protein grams to carbohydrates is not where it needs to be, I'll gain weight. Not a shocker, I have a long history of insulin resistance. So even when you're picking out your protein powders, you wanna look at sugar amounts, you wanna look at carbohydrate amounts, how many additives are in there, because again, the body, is processing things holistically. It's looking at what is this particular food gonna do for my blood sugar, for my insulin, for my gut health, for my liver, for my hormones, and so much more. It's not just calories in, calories out, or macros in and macros out. So hopefully that's helpful. Why don't I like these? I actually love this cheese. That is, this was another weakness all through childhood. But this is processed. A slice of traditional cheese gives you about seven grams of protein. So does this, about five, maybe. Again, it's seen more as a carbohydrate rather than a protein because of the way it's metabolized in the body. So that brings us down to my favorite superfoods. So we have salmon here. This is a serving of salmon that actually has about 30 grams of protein more than you probably need at every serving unless you're building muscle and lifting a lot of weights and doing things like that. Gives you the protein you need, is metabolized beautifully by the body, has a lot of healthy fats to balance it out, it makes it a perfect protein. Let's go to almonds, love almonds. Seven to 10, it gives you about seven to 10 grams of protein. More than that, you're getting more protein, but you're also getting more fat. Almonds have a lot of healthy fat, they have fiber, they're nicely balanced, but you really don't need more than seven to 10 per serving. And then eggs, eggs indeed are a superfood, a great breakfast food, you can use them in so many different ways. They're perfectly balanced with protein, with healthy fats, with choline for your brain, the body's happy, you uses it well, keeps your blood sugar stable for hours, about seven grams in one egg. If you're doing two, then it's about 14 grams. So again, thinking through the quality of the protein, the amount, you know, one of the biggest mistakes folks will make with meat in particular, just thinking about kind of the vegan and vegetarian movement out there, is that they'll eat a steak like this big, right? Or a full chicken breast. Well, that's a lot of protein, but it's also too much for the gut to metabolize at a particular time. So that's why we wanna be careful with this stuff. 20 to 25 grams is a safe bet. We don't need 40 in a given serving. It might be hard on the gut. Think about how it was manufactured or where it's coming from. How natural or close to the earth is it? And is it easy for your body to digest? You wanna watch for sugar, you wanna watch for additives, and that's the way to keep your protein grams where they need to be, but help the body metabolize everything effectively. There's so much confusion around metabolic health, but remember, muscle health matters, blood sugar matters, your insulin levels matter. Protein makes a difference in that equation, but it's gotta be high quality and the right amount. All right, I hope you found this useful and you're able to clarify any protein confusion. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, I post new videos every week.